My name is Ricarda Erickson with the Vermont River Conservancy and we are going to give you a presentation tonight and also provide an opportunity to hear from you your thoughts on the Confluence River Park. And just to um, wanted to do a couple thank yous and one is to um, Jana Claire, the director of the Senior Activity Center here who offered up this space for us and also to um, AARP, the Vermont chapter, um, has donated the food for tonight and they've been an incredible partner in this project in identifying what people, um, how community members use parks and that's been a, a critical part as we design this Confluence River Park. So those two thank yous and we are going to present tonight Ricarda Erickson and Steve Libby, also from the Vermont River Conservancy. And then we have Roy Schiff from our design team, Malone and McBroom, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But I wanted to give you an overview of what we'll be doing tonight, what we'll be talking about. First, we're going to give you a background of the Confluence Park, how it came to be, where we're at, a timeline looking ahead, and where we're going with it. And you'll hear from um, a little bit more about the Vermont River Conservancy and what we do. And then we can open it up to feedback from you. We want to really hear from you what you would like to see at a Confluence Park. And we have Roy here to answer some more technical questions and give us a sense of um, design, limitations, and opportunities. So that's a little overview. And um, to start out with, with the history, where, how we got here tonight with the Confluence River Park really is, um, for the Vermont River Conservancy, doesn't go back too far. We, at the beginning of this year in January, um, we started an initiative that we call Face the River. And what we are seeing with the projects that we do throughout the state, we do river conservation projects throughout the state. So we protect public access to places along our rivers so people can access them for fishing, boating, swimming. And um, we also do paddlers trails, so long um, trails so that people can do overnight trips along our rivers. And then we also protect <coughs> land along rivers so that rivers have space to meander and to flood when they need to. And so we were seeing throughout the state this real need for our town centers and urban areas to face the river. We were seeing that in a lot of our urban areas, we have our backs to the river, meaning our rivers run through our cities and town centers with, a, with surrounded by often concrete um, buildings, um, parking lots, but not a lot of space to access those rivers. Not a lot of space, not a lot of green space around those rivers in our town centers. And we were especially seeing it in Montpelier, our capital, where we should be a, a great example um, for the rest of the state and where we also have five beautiful rivers that are running through our city, right in the downtown of our city. So, we really wanted to think about how do we shift that perspective? How do we turn and face the river? And how do we give people opportunities to see the rivers running through our town centers and um, urban areas? So through this Face the River project, we did presentations. Some of you <coughs> are, were at those presentations that we did throughout the summer and into the fall. And we also did some research, looking back into the history of rivers in Montpelier. And interestingly, and we also started to have conversations with city officials, and we went to um, city council meetings <coughs> and just tried to really educate ourselves as to what were the conversations that are, were happening around rivers in Montpelier. And um, in the spring, um, <coughs> Steve and I were having a conversation with <coughs> Mayor Ann Watson, and at that point, we started talking about, wouldn't it be amazing to have a park at the confluence of the North Branch and the main stem of the Winooski Rivers, right in the heart of downtown? And at that point, we actually thought we, we came up with the idea, our, our idea ourselves, and we were pretty excited about it. 
But then in doing research and looking back into the history of these kinds of conversations in Montpelier, we discovered that this conversation, as many of you know, has been happening for a long time. So for a long time, for about 25 years, we've been talking about a confluence river park in Montpelier at this very spot. And so with all that information and with the, the awareness that there is a lot happening in Montpelier right now, a lot of projects along our river. We have um, the parking garage, we have the transit center, one Taylor Street, and um, the bike path, uh, what am I missing? Um, oh, no. Hotel, thank you. So all these projects, all these conversations were coming up and we thought what a perfect time to start bringing that conversation back from, from you know, two decades ago, that conversation back about a Confluence River Park. So that is the history. That's <clears throat> and then in um, August, at the end of August, we uh, presented to the city council an opportunity that we had through funding from a grant to, to hire a design team to do a conceptual design and feasibility study for a confluence park, to look at what could it be, and um, really what could it be based on what's, what does the parcel look like, what are the considerations, what are the obstacles, and um, also feasibility study. What would it cost to build a park there? And what do people want out of a park? So we presented this idea to the city council and said, we would like to do this study. We have funding for it. And they said, yes, we would love for you to do that. They declared at that um, meeting the Confluence Park a city park. And they said they would await this study that we're doing. And so that was at the end of August. We will present to the city council in January, on January 9th, at the city council meeting, we will present this feasibility study and conceptual design. And so right away, we put out an RFP. We knew we had a short time, time frame. We um, got proposals from design teams across the country. And we, through an advisory committee, we hired <laughs> Um, contracted with Malone and McBroom, of which Roy Schiff is here tonight. And so we've been working with them since the beginning of September on, you know, very, very quickly getting them the information they need and getting all, um, all the feedback that we've received so far. And tonight, you know, we'll give them more feedback as well. So that's the, the history of how we got here. And before we, we get into any more detail, I wanted to give you a little more context of where this river park is, where this Confluence River Park is. So um, this is just, do you want me to turn off another light? Can, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, OK. I'll get it. You got it, thank you. Um, so I'm going to give you many different angles here. We're going to kind of look at this, this spot from a few different viewpoints. And this is just a Google Earth image here. And um, you can see the, uh, let's see if this pointer works, the, the north branch coming in here and the main stem of the Winooski here. So this part outlined in red is what is the Confluence Park. And that is the, the parcel that the city council said this will be a city park. Then, let's see. <laughs> so hang on though. That's, that's what we're going on now. So like I said, a couple different vantage points we're going to look at. So here is a drone um, shot from just a few weeks ago looking down um, the Confluence Park here. So this right here is what we're talking about, this parcel. And to give you context, the one Taylor Street project, the transit center is right here. And when we started this project, when we started this research, that's what, or, or this uh, work with Malone and McRoom, that's what we knew for sure. We knew that the transit center construction had started. 
Did you have a question? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, no. But um, I just moved here two weeks ago, and as of the council meeting last week, I don't know if you had yes. to talk of the city, but they were talking about. Uh, yes. Okay, if you do know that. Yes, the new yes. So the Confluence Park East is what we're calling that, and we'll we'll discuss that in just a moment. Yeah. So so I'm kind of trying to back up, and at that point in time, all we all we knew for sure was this transit center was um, construction had started and as part of the transit center parcel um, there was already an area set to be a confluence park so whether or not the city moves ahead with what we propose and we hope they will but there will be green space here and what the Vermont River Conservancy why we came into this project was we thought it could be so much more than um, just a green space. And Steve, do you want to talk a little bit about what? Um, what are the dimensions yeah. of it? I mean, everyone sort of thought, well, it looks tiny. Can you just tell us what the size of the park would be? Sure. So the dimensions, I don't know the exact dimensions, but one thing that changed during, um, during this process is when the parking garage passed, six parking spaces were then um, given to green space. So this red um, boundary area was a change from um, you know, the vote in November. That, gave, that increased the space a fair amount. So it started out smaller, it's, it's gotten bigger with six parking spaces that were set to be part of the transit center lot are now there. So um, <coughs> dimension wise... I that's a quarter acre, maybe? There is a scale right on that yeah. figure, if you can make that out. It's a little hard, it's hard to see, but yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, I'd say about a quarter of an acre. Yeah. So, so, Steve, do you want to talk about the... Yeah, I'll just say a couple things about um, kind of how we got involved in this. And, and I do want to say that it's not just the River Conservancy by ourselves. We're part of a much larger group of interests in Montpelier to look at, you know, what's Montpelier's future look like? The you know, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, the, there's a lot of other um, thinking going on about Montpelier. And we, we were sort of taking a part of that and focusing and trying to bring into reality one part of some of these larger visions. So, um, and, and we, from our point of view, at the beginning of this, we kind of laid out four primary objectives for the Confluence Park that, that align with our mission. So, and, and those are primarily, the first is getting access to the river, you know, getting down to the river itself. That's such an important part of our, you know, our connection to the landscape is being able to actually get down to the river. Um, second was um, water quality, that we should be doing everything we can to enhance water quality. And having a park on the river will be a really a good incentive for a lot of other kind of water quality efforts to follow on. A third was, is there anything that we can do in this effort to increase kind of flood resilience? We know Montpelier is prone to flooding, to ice jams, that sort of thing. So can we, even in a small way, through this park, um, uh, enhance some of the flood resilience of the community. And the fourth one, it, it should be beautiful. It should be a place that people want to visit and go. And, and the, having the bike path or the multi-use path go through here is really going to change, we think, the dynamic of pedestrian flow in downtown Montpelier. Um, you know, the high school's out here. The transit set is going to add a lot of new people to downtown. There's um, two sig new significant housing projects that are happening right in this area, the hotels. So we think there's going to be a lot of activity here, so we should really have this be a beautiful place. So if we can keep those, we'll be happy if we can emerge from this with those four kind of objectives. So Great. Yeah. And just to give a, so we'll continue in this um, context, um, giving you an idea. So here is the, um, this is from the city website. This is the, uh, the plan for the transit center. And you can see, so this is, again, the Confluence Park right here. This is putting in the, the bike path through there. And some more project concept, context is, so the 
transit center rendering. And then, as you know, in November, um, the city voted to allow a parking garage um, on that on the site, right kind of behind the one Taylor Street transit center area. So to give it will impact the Confluence Park and it's, you know, something that's right nearby. So this, um, this slide was put together by um, the landscape architect with Malone and McBroom, who we're working with, and their, their considerations with these projects that have kind of really st are starting to come to be during this process that we had hired them for. So they're, they're working with a fairly constantly changing landscape. So they're, what they're thinking about is that integration and cohesiveness. How does the Confluence Park fit into this bigger picture? How does it fit into um, the transit center, the bike path, the, the parking garage, the, the hotel? And thinking about how it fits and how it connects with the rest of the city. Uh, then to, to, to your question about um, the council meeting, was that just last week? Yeah, last week. Last week, okay. So also through this process, um, this lot right here um, was, is the city calls it the Moat lot. And it was set to, um, it had the m and &M building and the um, Center for the Blind that were um, taken down. Right now, if you drive by it, it's a, just an empty lot. The buildings were demolished. And, um, and the city has, as of last week, has said, we will hold off on continuing with our plans to build a building and a parking lot on this site so that we can consider other options. One option that we've been thinking about and other organizations like Sustainable Montpelier have been thinking about is what if there was a confluence park east here, meaning the east side of the North Branch River. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, B, this is the confluence park west side. What if there was a park on the other side of the pedestrian bridge that connect to the west site? Um, so that was something that, as of last week, was sort of a, became a real tangible part of this project that we would like to consider. So we have asked Malone and McBroom to consider that also in a conceptual design and feasibility study. So that is a recent development. Our primary focus is, is to make sure we don't lose track of the, the original task of designing a park for the west side. So that is going to, that won't be impact, the timeline won't be impacted. We will still present this conceptual design in January. And um, we hope that it will be able to include a, uh, a conceptual design for the Confluence Park East. Though the Confluence Park East, as we're calling it, Moat Lot um, from the city, is, is still um, undefined. The city is, st is in this period in which they are um, putting together a task force to consider some other opportunities that will be presented to the public and for consideration over the next couple of months. So that is something we will be asking for public input on as well. All right, so that was, that brought you up to, to speed, I believe, with the context. And I appreciate the questions that were asked, so if there are any other questions, feel free to, um, to jump in. I think what we want to do now is focus on what the considerations are for the Confluence Park. What are some of the limitations and what are some of the opportunities? And so just to go over a few of those, and Roy, feel free to jump in on any thoughts here. Um, 
one consideration, and I just love this picture um, from the Historical Society. This is from 1929, and so the red circle is the Confluence Park. And um, the, what you can see is this, this stone, um, the stone wall, which part of it still remains and is considered a his, historic landmark or a historic, resource, historic yeah. resource. So it is something that um, should be considered in the current design. Um, what are some other things? So that's, that's the main thing. And you can see this part of that wall still remains here. And that's, um, I mean, Roy, do you want to say anything about um, what you're considering with for that? Or? Um, I'll talk a little more once you're done. OK. Great. Um, so other considerations, safety and access considerations. Um, as Steve mentioned, it's very important to the Vermont River Conservancy and also to many people that we've talked to at the um, prior public meetings. People want to get down to the river here. And if you haven't yet gone <coughs> down there, um, it's a pretty incredible spot under, under the railroad bridge there. Um, I was there just a few weeks ago and we saw a river otter. We've, I've seen a heron down there. And it's... Um, it's, you don't really hear the noise from the street when you're down there. It feels like a whole other world. So that's one thing that's really important to us in, in considering that relationship that we would like for people to have with our rivers, to be able to experience that right at the river shore, right, right down there rather than just looking over um, from, from up above. Um, universal access, we would like for people of all uh, physical abilities to be able to get down to the river. That is a huge goal of ours. Uh, the bike path is a consideration because as you saw in the previous slides, it, it bisects the park, it goes right through the park. And it's a limitation in that it, it cuts off the park, but it's also an opportunity to incorporate the, the bike path within the park. Um, the railroad um, is a consideration in that um, access under a railroad and around a railroad bridge is, has to be carefully thought out and considered. Um, Steve, do you want to go through some of the environmental considerations? You mentioned a lot of them as our goals. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'll t say a couple things. One is, as you said before, it's a very flood-prone area. So anything that's done here has to really recognize it's, it, it's, it's going to flood. Um, so how it's designed and how it's built has to take that into account. It's also be, uh, that historic slide that you showed, all that industrial use down there. Um, the Taylor Street property, and this is the Confluence Park area, it's um, a contaminated site. So any disturbance of the soils there have to be handled carefully. Um, the rivers themselves, um, we talked about the water quality, the potential to kind of restore the rivers as part of this. Um, as Ricardo said, when you're down at the river edge, it really is this feels like a whole different place. But you also see kind of the impact that years of industrialization have had on the river itself. So how to sort of think about the river as a restorable element of this is another kind of environmental consideration. Um, <clears throat> we know other places around the country have restored their rivers in, in really uh, creative and, and very um, kind of impactful ways and, and actually bringing riparian and river edge habitats back to these rivers is possible in urban areas. You can imagine, as Ricardo said, the day we're down there to see that, you know, see an otter swimming up the river is, you know, it's, it's pretty encouraging that we can kind of bring these rivers back, even in downtown Montpelier, to a, you know, kind of a restored state where they will be ecologically um, functional areas too. So that's part of the thinking as well, is how, what, how do we deal with these what might call environmental considerations. Can you explain that picture at the bottom right, Ben? This, this one right here? Yeah. That's, we think, that was, we believe that was, a, I think, the 1992 ice dam, ice dam flood. 
You can see the ice yeah. Yeah. back down there. Mm -hmm. And when you say it's flood prone, what does that actually mean? It means it, the elevation is a problem or undercutting because the river curves there? Or mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? So um, rivers are mapped um, to, to show their flooding characteristics, I guess you might say. And it's, it's, you know, it's different in every area, but you can calculate through engineering studies. During a flood event, how high will the water come up? What will it inundate? What, you know, so and they can start to draw maps of areas that will be flooded under certain conditions. And so a typical one you hear about is the 100-year flood. So the, the flood that statistically happens once every 100 years. And you, you can calculate where that, what area will be flooded during that type of a flood. There's other kind of floodplain characteristics that can be described too. There's a area called a floodway, which is the part of the system that will be actively um, active water flows during flood events as opposed to just inundations. Um, so there's a lot of sort of um, thinking that's been done about floodplains and why they're important to protect. Um, you know, Montpelier is built on floodplains. It just, you know, that's the reality. So we have to think about how to adapt to the fact that the river does flood and maybe more frequently. So, does that answer dark, your question? Is the dark area of the map shown the flood? Uh, I think that's all the, what, what's called the special flood hazard area, which, Roy, is that right? Is that all? Yeah, that's flood? the 100 year flood plain. It's all the 100 year flood plain. So that, so you see down here, you know, all of that area here, all of that hatch area there flooded in that 92 flood. So that was, you know, 26 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. I bet the river's high today. There's a, there was a lot of water in the river this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um. So pretty soon I'm gonna, we're going to hand it over to all of you to hear your feedback. Um, and I just want to emphasize the importance that the Vermont River Conservancy sees in this recreation potential and the opportunity to increase the, the vibrancy of this area. And this spot is really visible. When, when you're coming in through town off of, um, when you're coming off of the highway, um, as a lot of people do when they enter Montpelier on Memorial Drive, you can look over and see the con what will be the Confluence Park from your car. You can also see it from the bridge by Shaw's. It's a pretty visible spot. And imagine if people were coming into Montpelier and that's one of the first things that they were seeing of our city is people out um, in the river recreating, people at a park at all times of the year enjoying the river, eating, eating lunch by the river, um, looking out enjoying the view in the river recreating. So what, that's the, really the level of vibrancy we would love to see in this spot. And we feel that if we could have that, that river park there and that energy that it could really expand if we saw that and saw the benefits that people could have from that river park, that it could really expand up the river, down the river, and could grow into a very river-centric urban area. Like one of the, like Steve said, there's examples from all across the country of urban areas who have just turned and faced the river in a with a little shift that then just grows into so much more. And so we see this as the, a first step in Montpelier really turning to face the river. Great, so um, yeah, we can hit one, one of the lights here. Um, I wanted to um, give Roy an opportunity to, to give a, a little intro of, of the work they've been doing. Um, and also give you the opportunity to answer some questions, to think about what you want to see with a river park. And um, appreciate, uh, I appreciate that Roy's here also to, as you think of what you'd like 
to Roy's here to give a little expertise um, and answer some questions that might come up. So first, Roy, if you want to do a little intro. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so it's great to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've lived in Montpelier for about 13 years. Um, the first night I moved into town, went to a conservation commission meeting with Jeff and many others, and um, on the topic was this parcel. Um, so it's really amazing to be talking about it. We've thought about this parcel a lot in many ways um, over the past decade um, since I've been here. Um, and so when this project came up, I was like, I don't know, it's a little too close to home, but I dreamt about it for a week pretty much. <laughs> and, um, joined my uh, co-workers, Regina and Carly, who are landscape architects, and we um, you know, submitted a proposal to do the work. So we're really excited to be working on the project. Um, there's really three steps of the project, collecting some information, um, which the River Conservancy had given us a lot, the city's given us a lot of information. We grabbed stuff from all the projects, so, and then we actually did some field work a couple days. Um, then we're really analyzing the site, and you've seen some text snippets um, that Regina's put together about the site information. And then finally, the main product is a couple concept designs. So we're doing alternatives um, that really capture access, recreation, um, flood resiliency, um, environmental protection, um, and other um, you know, topics that, about that we would like to have in this park, places to sit, places to eat, um, and really pulling people to the river, and that's really a goal. Um, in my time in Montpelier, I've spent a lot of time in this spot, um, launching a canoe to take my family on a canoe trip, fishing, bird watching, eating lunch after the farmer's market, so I think we have a pretty good feel of what the potential uses of this site are. Um, my vision is that you see the church in the background where everybody hangs out at lunch on a great day. You know, there's going to be a couple of buildings here, but there'll be pathways through those buildings, and maybe this river park becomes a spot um, that people can sit and enjoy. Um, this is a spot where there could be arts, concerts, um, art showings in the spot. Uh, so a lot of a lot of really neat opportunities. And the majority of my work is helping people live around rivers safely, flood mitigation. Um, you know, we do environmental restoration, we do some development um, around rivers um, to do it properly, but we also really um, have a history of bringing people to the river. Um, in Bristol, on the New Haven River, we worked on an ADA accessible fishing platform, which we've thought about with some elements of maybe having people um, come off the bike path and be able to actually overhang the river and fish if they're unable to traverse down this, this bank. Um, so just to give you a little overview, we're not going to go into all the details. I'm happy to answer questions after. Um, the, the, the site right now is filled with a lot of stuff. There's concrete, rock, asphalt, metal. You know, there was a lot of industrialization, as Steve and, and Ricardo had said. And so the site's going to be cleaned up. Um, and also the fill is earth. So there's a very steep bank. And actually, when you back away from this bank, you lose sight of the river very quickly. So one of the main things is when you're coming across the bike path or approaching this site, we're going to restore the visual entrance to the river. Um, we're also going to keep in mind the flood levels. Um, we have the, the mapped floodplains when the 10-year or 50-year, 100-year flood spill out um, or where they come out on that bank. So the bottom of, of the parcel will have to be um, resilient to the flooding, both by just getting flooded, but also getting eroded because the water comes out of the north branch with pretty high velocity and flood. So a few things we're thinking about. Again, I think about river processes, um, naturalizing rivers, so we're going to think about naturalizing the bank as much as possible, but we also want to have a place where someone, a child, can sit with their feet in the river or um, somebody can carry a canoe down there and literally walk into the river here. Um, there is bedrock around some of the pieces of Montpelier and low flow you see them and you actually will see people sitting on those so maybe we would emulate that where someone could actually on a nice day sit out on the river um, right at the edge here um, after either parking in the garage or you know going to a shop downtown taking a break with a slice of pizza and sitting down in the river you know it's a really it's a really neat spot 
Um, and so we're also looking at the Confluence Park East. And if you've been out to the site now, there are two giant holes on the banks with some stone around them. And those are the abutments for a new pedestrian bridge that's going to cross there. Um, and the plan right now is there'll be a boardwalk behind the parking garage. And we're thinking about ideas to integrate all of that into both of these parcels. Um, we envision that there'll be there'll be green space there, but there'll also be active space, possibly a pavilion for a concert or to get out of the sun. Um, hopefully people will be swimming there um, in the future. Um, there'll be a boat access um, in one side or the other. This is actually a complicated task to get a boat down there safely, so we're thinking about how do you get 17 feet and shave that bank down and have some sort of a path that um, people can walk down. Um, we believe there'll be, we're planning on different levels of accessibility. So can a person in a wheelchair actually wheel down to the river or is there an overlook viewing platform? Um, and are there stairs for able-bodied people to come right down quickly? So we're thinking a lot, they are smaller sites, but our initial look at them indicates there's a lot of these goals can be met, there are opportunities. And we have a lot of examples in Vermont and around the region where small parcels like this are, you know, are really serving a lot of functions. So. Um, the other thing that really is tugging at me right now is I was walking around on the Capitol and you know one thing about our, our main streets, state, main, like, like we don't have a lot of like green corridors and this is really the first chance I think for us to connect the bike path, Confluence Park West, cross a, a pedestrian specific bridge and actually bring that out onto main street in a spot where we don't have park space. And we have a couple really beautiful wooden parklets. They're fairly urban. They have a little vegetation in them. But here, we can connect that out onto our business. Imagine going into the hardware store, getting a bagel, and then going through this green corridor and landing at the river. Um, it will become a really easy thing to do for, for a whole host of people. And I'm thinking a lot about kids. So like good mountain biking is emerging in the city. And this is like another great spot to get maybe kids paddling more, and, and they can launch right out of our state's capital. So I'm can really- you, Can you remind me where the dam is? Um, well, there's two dams. There's yeah, the, the, yeah. The, what's called the Rat Dam is a, just off the edge of this. Can you go back to the- Yeah, yeah. 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 we go back to the aerial photo. So, yeah. The, well, the for uh, one of the uh, earlier yeah. ones? Yeah. Back to what? This one? Yeah, this one. So here's the dam. This is known as the Rat Dam here. Um, there's actually what's known as the other, the other, the other, the other dam, dam. Yeah. the main dam across the main yeah. I think right about here. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. So and where's the one on the North Bridge? You see this white water here. Right. Now there's. So a, you're thinking that the paddling opportunities are going uh, west on the Winooski? Um, well, the I guess. Right now, the thought is that you could enter, um, you could oh, actually above the dam. enter upstream, downstream of Wrightsville, um, portage around a lane shop dam, and actually come through here. You could right. um, do the same on the Winooski, or you could start here and go down to other um, designated right. canoe um, portages in and out of the river. Right. Um, or in and out of the river. So you could start or end here. Um, under certain conditions, I think you actually could could play around in boats on this stretch. So whitewater folks jump into the river and jump out and go in and out. So there are a couple spots along this stretch of river. I've seen some folks doing that under higher water. They're obviously trained to do that. Um, another feature while we're looking here is there's a combined sewer overflow that comes out right here. That's, um, that's a water quality issue that hopefully this will vault the um, remediation of where you have under high flow where there's a lot of water moving through the city and pipes combines with sewage and is discharged here and so that's really something that's kind of I think a next big step um, is is eliminating that and that really should do a lot to clean up the water quality right in this area and that that process is is undergoing um, throughout the city right now. that would be done elsewhere other than right there that's right yeah yeah um, and you can actually see in this picture, here's the hole for one of the abutments. And this is an older shot. There's now a giant hole here. And you see some rock in here. And is the bridge there? Um, it's not there. It's, it's gonna, not I think there it's going to be installed in the spring. Okay. But the contractors are working to get the foundation in. Um, they're battling the weather right now. So the dams are actually going to be part of this consideration. Um, I've looked at these dams in 92. 
Um, I looked at a flood pattern where the ice jam hit on the Dog River bend further downstream. It backed up. It shoved water up here and into the city, and water was coming out of a sewer system on State Street. So I think, you know, I, from what I've seen, that um, the dam um, behind Shaw's is actually an issue um, for the flooding in the city when there's a liability. You're saying? Say again. A liability. You're saying? A liability. Yes. Yeah. So um, you know, I we're going to think about that a little more. And then this is a really small dam, um, and there's actually a a horseshoe bedrock outcrop that sits right under that rail bridge. Um, so we're not. We, we've heard rumors about what this dam was used for. Um, it's called the Rat Dam, and maybe it covered up pipes where rats were coming to the city. Um, I don't know the history of it. I have to do a little more research on that. But I know you, somebody who might know. Okay. Ma um, Manny Ramirez. Manny Ramirez. He, okay. uh, he, he, would, he would know. He's kind of an expert on the industrial oh, great. part of the river in Mount Pelier. Okay, thank you. So was there talk of taking out the rat dam or? Um, that talk, yes. that's definitely part of the alternatives. That's one of them. Um, uh, so we'll look into that. Um, as Garcia, part of this. sorry. Say I again? always do that. Manny Garcia. Okay. Thank you. Um, so those are a few things we're thinking about. Um, again, trying, you know, one of the big, one of the biggest constraints in all of this work development part is, is the rail line running through here. There are pretty strict requirements. The rail lines are notoriously difficult to work with. So there's actually a right of way or a space right here and there's a permitted crossing. The bike path is actually gonna go through right here. So that really you know, separates, um, for better or worse, I mean, it separates the buildings from getting closer to the river other than one tailor. Um, it also you know, separates Shaw's, the rail corridor, and um, you know, the potential confluence park east site a little bit. So we'll, you know, we'll think about screening out the rail corridor um, in spots and trying to create these green spots. Hey, Roy. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say that there's a bit of clutter down there in the, uh, the center of the, which is Shaw's backyard. Oh, this? That <laughs> stuff? <laughs> that uh, property is owned by Ernie Palmerlow, which I'm sure you know. And uh, I've had several conversations with him about his backyard. And he is totally committed to cleaning it up and hiding whatever is unsightly and necessary for operations over there um, from hiding it from view of the, the park, mm. the park west. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's amazing. I mean, <clears throat> in walking around the site, you know, when you have a project, you look at things a little differently. Mm -hmm. um, and as looking at the site, actually, if you walk out to this spot and sit there, it, it is actually an amazing spot. Yeah. Um, if you put your blinders on with all the dumpsters yeah. and junk all around you, I mean, you're looking down here, you know, right down the Winooski, and then you look and see the Capitol back here. I mean, it would be an amazing spot to like eat, you know, or hang out back there. So the, the opportunities are really amazing. And, and if you're looking, up, right now, this is all sort of shaded and there's not much here, but if you look onto this spot, you know, in the future, you could see this beautiful park space, yeah. um, and you could, you know, it, it just there's a lot of opportunity, and it really would kind of tie this all, this whole corner together. Yeah, yeah, and he he is ready, willing, and able, oh, that's and amazing. he he owns the the land across the bridge too, the okay. Sardegis. So oh, it's Sardegis. He, he's, mm. he's in a position of being a welcome wagon into town okay. across the middle yeah. bridge. I mean, that, that area behind Shaw's has gotten significantly worse in the last couple of years. Because mm -hmm. uh, I fish down there, and it's, it used to be easy to just you know, climb down. And, yeah, it is a beautiful spot there. But yeah. uh, by design or not, Shaw's has made it almost impossible to, to access that. Yeah. Are those fences? Around the edge. Um, yes. This is a guardrail. guardrail. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's what you see on a highway, a state highway. Yeah. It doesn't really belong there. But they're 
they're using it kind of to just contain all the stuff for us little. I mean, some of it's already on the bank. Um, it's kind of spilled over, but they're kind of containing stuff. Shopping carts. Uh, if you want to spend an interesting half a day, go back there and with permission from Shaw's and just watch how crazy busy that whole area gets. It, it's unbelievable. And the guardrails are there to prevent things from going, trucks and such from going yeah. over the edge at some point. Don't all their trucks like back up around yeah. into that area? They, they used like, to. They back. I've seen trucks now parked yeah. here recently, but yeah. I have yeah. also before. But now you see this. This is all. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. It's like my attic. Just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are those I, propane tanks? Those yeah. three. Yes. Mm -hmm. hey, one one other thing, Ricardo mentioned. If if you drive into the city. Um, you know, you sort of get views of the Capitol, kind of sitting up high in Hubbard Park, and then you kind of come through like the auto shop and the gas station. You really don't see anything until you hit that light and make that turn. And right now, you see um, a lot of this development and um, the backs of these buildings. But I think, you know, if this if this were um, a green space, your eye would go right to that, and I think it'd be a really inviting spot because, you know, in the future, many of our visitors might be coming in and going to that parking garage, which would take them around right to here, right? And so it could be like a first stop. You know, we've talked a lot about interpretive signage of the history of these rivers and, you know, the flooding that's gone on here and the water quality issues and really having the chance not only get people to see our rivers but to learn about our history and uh, kind of cherish you know, Vermont rivers. One of the things that's missing are large trees. Yeah. Uh, there used to be a large cottonwood right behind the uh, Christ Church uh, annex uh, that every year had uh, Orioles nesting in. Um, but that came down and there, there really are no large trees at all. There's yeah. plenty of opportunity to have that's a great point. Um, we're definitely balancing. One thing we really want to do is get as much, we can't naturalize this spot 100% because of what's around there. Um, but what we want to do is kind of hit the right mix of naturalizing the bank with native bank vegetation that you'd see in a, in a wilder river in Vermont and make sure people know like the cottonwood or um, some of the herbaceous species and try to plant pockets have been there and, and large trees are certainly kind of the anchor of all that planting so um, we're sort of working through balancing having some rock into the river and some trees and riparian vegetation it's going to be a, um, an important part of that it's question in the back yeah. um, about five years ago we had a water fest here at Montpelier and we use that space as a ritual space and a dance performance space. And um, so we, those of us who were involved, really would love to see some kind of circle of trees or standing stones that could be a ritual performance space. Uh, and we climbed down to the river, which wasn't easy yeah. at that point, to get water for the, for the ritual. So we, we love the idea of being able to Mm -hmm. Is there um, what sort of culture is it native? You know, do you have any thoughts about? Because I mean, we were thinking about, we heard a little bit from others about like cultural identity of this spot um, at a confluence. Was often a spot native people would fish or use it yeah, to that move. That seems to be native would be mm -hmm. me most of the people. Okay. Um, and I would like to to suggest we, it's really important that we hear from you and whether or not you're comfortable saying your, your thoughts of what you'd like to see there or if you'd rather write it down. Um, we would love for you to do both. Write it down and share with us what you would like to see there. Thoughts like that um, some of you have shared. But to imagine that this is um, a blank slate. Imagine that the Confluence Park is just cleared out there and put, put in what you would want. How would you want to use a Confluence Park? If you say it's all complete, five years from now you're standing in the park, what are you doing there? Why did you come there? What, what drew you to that spot? 
So I would love to um, hand out some paper and have you write your thoughts down. Tino. Okay, just one, before we do that, um, would it be helpful to talk more about the possible East branch, about what, what are the givens or what we should assume about that? Sure. Um, we can better. I, I have a question about that. I mean, it looks so nice now that those buildings on the Moffat Place are down and the Moffat Black, that they're gone and you can see the Capitol. But I don't think that's going to be likely with a four story parking garage. Is that true? So I can get I can give you excuse me a, a quick thumbnail yeah. sketch of the conversations that we've been involved with over the last week or so about this. So the on one of the diagrams or one of the plans that showed the area on the east side, which is the city owned, city owns the, the footprint of the old M and M beverage and the old. Um, so. Yeah. So this is an aerial photo that was taken when the um, Associated for the Blind building was here, and right under here is the M&M &M building. So this is at least um, what we understand the city on property at this There's point. a sketch that shows it much better than that. Yeah. Do you, you, it's a previous slide. Oh, the... Um this one? Uh, even back... Uh, yeah. yeah, well, we can yeah, use this one. Yeah. So, so this, was, this was the plan, right. the so, new building and that. Yeah. So there was a, there was a um, plan for the use of that park, which was to add a building and add parking there. And at the last city council meeting, from, I wasn't there, but from what I understand, the um, city council agreed to kind of put that plan on hold for several months and, mm -hmm. to, and to kind of create a process um, for considering other options for the site. So that's kind of my understanding now. My, but, but my question was, that's going to be lower, and if you, and I've walked over there and I've looked, and it's really beautiful. You can see yeah. the state capitol dome mm -hmm. now, but the parking garage is going to go right there, yeah. and that's going to be four stories. So yeah. my question was, is there any visibility? And I, I sure suspect no, know. but I'm asking you. Is it, can you see, will you see, be able to see the Capitol building from yeah. the yeah. Confluence East Park? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I, I don't know for sure, but we'll look into that because you're right. Um, I was there in yeah. the evening and it was just a beautiful oh, view out the back there. Yeah. There's some telephone poles in the way, but right. uh, you I can think, move those. But Yeah, I think um, it's going to kind of come down to details of how the, the parking garage is going to be somewhere in here. Well, they know where it's going to be. Yeah. Right? So, no, it's, yeah. it's like. Maybe even with balloons, that's how people do it. It's like the balloons yeah. up to, to, to the elevation, and then you can get an idea whether you can see. And I think that would be yeah, that, really important. That could be a great idea as we move along. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, I'm sorry. I really don't, I don't want to ask stupid questions because I don't really know. There's no stupid questions. All of you are. Um, but so, the parking garage is going here. It's going to go right behind the church. It's going it's something like this. Okay, and then you have all this parking still here. And then there's a hotel that's planned to be hill. All the hotels right there. Okay, yeah. and then right. you have parking here. And then this parking is associated with the transit center. Okay, so like as a resident, right, I just moved, I live, I live over here. Yeah. I don't see myself just walking over here in any instance, right? Like I'm not going to walk to the parking garage. What would you walk? I can see you walk. The bike path yeah. just crosses the <laughs> river right there. No, I mean, I love the idea of, I, I think there should be more parks. I yeah. really agree. Like, I love the idea of the park. No, I, I think that's, I think but that's been a good question, is kind of the, how do you get to this place? Yeah. Like, what are the corridors yeah, and, and pathways? Well, yeah, I love people the programming there, and that's exciting, yeah. but it's a really good point. One of our, in our advisory committee, we were having a discussion about that, and, um, Someone referred, referred to the um, Confluence Park West, the current Confluence Park, as um, the backdoor park. Like the, and the, if there was a park here, that would be the entryway park. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that, that that would be the park that you would see right off the road, and then you would then want to continue on across the way. But yeah, that's a really good point. And, and um, also to, to the, 
the line of sight, the viewscape point, I think is a really important one. And um, with those two buildings gone, I right away was like, oh, I love this view. It's a different, when, when buildings are gone, you, you notice a different, a different view. And I notice that you can, really can see right to the Capitol when you're, when you're right by that, um, that Moat lot you can see there. And so I was, I was very curious as well, what, what will it look like when the parking garage is there? Um, what will be the viewscape? Do you have a plan that shows how that large space is proposed to be filled with buildings? Because it seems very massive, any, any kind of scheme that I've seen it that's been published. I mean, it just looks like that. Well, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, I think it's, uh, I mean, it would be nice to see um, how the, uh, the masses are being planned in terms of, you know, how that, that big space, the Taylor Street project space is, is, is laid out. In this, this, like where the parking garage will go, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 the parking garage, yeah. the transit center, that's, that's the, proposed, the proposed buildings, of, you know, whatever housing. I mean, how is that going to be filled? And then the obsession with also adding parking space, more parking spaces there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think uh, most people would rather see green spaces than parking spaces, especially after having voted for, you know, a rather expensive uh, parking garage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that I haven't seen yet, you know, it's like, give me an idea of what they are, how massive it is. It is. It, you're right. There, you know, there are some images on the, the city site of specific projects on their own, mm -hmm. but what is that? What's the all together view? You, you're right. That's it. Yeah. I think the parking garage visual that you had, it's, you've got that in the transit center. I think that actually showed some of the other buildings behind it. Oh, I think it was the other the, the right. <clears throat> this one. Um, yeah, okay, upper right. You, I mean, it's hard to see, but that's the parking garage and the railroad track and the byway and the hotel. And then there's the, yeah. the white building is a hotel. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and another. So that's as close as we got angle. to some. Yeah, that's right. Can you up? Yeah, but I mean, it just so, addresses one of the things but the you test, today, at least to see. The task of this group and for us is to not change that, but to how to make these parks inviting spaces that draw us in and give us a relationship to the river. And the whole question is, will people walk across the river and come to the, the Confluence Park West? Well, it depends on how we design it. It's like, it, will you be able to get down to the river? Will it be inviting? Will it be like uh, great places to sit? Uh, what, how, how will it break? And it brings you down to the river, as Ricardo says, and it's quiet, you can't hear other things, then it's, then it's worth that walk across. Bob, did you <coughs> uh, so you have funding for the design, but what's a rough estimate of what the confluence park is going to cost, and, and how will that be funded? I mean, yeah. you know, we it's a good come up with great ideas, but if you know we're starting off at ten million or whatever, and then going up, the, yeah. I mean, what's the we that, and that's exactly why we're doing this is because we wanted to be able to to have that sense, and that's what. Um, Malone and McBroom is working on, and that's what we will present in January to the city council. And as of now, the the city hasn't committed to any level of any of these ideas we're talking about. But it's our hope that we present a conceptual design that has um, the research backing it up and the, the kind of the ground truthing to date to back it up and the, uh, a feasibility study that includes some numbers. And uh, VRC is also working on coming up with funding sources uh, to also present that, at that meeting. So yeah, that's, gonna, that's, that's part of what we're doing. And we, we just simply don't have those. We're not ready to, to even make a guess to put out any numbers. Uh, one more question, probably, if you know this. What's the elevation drop? of the river from, say, Spring Street down to the mouth there? Um, mm, I was just looking at this. It's not a lot. I mean, it's a couple of feet, maybe? A foot at most? Well, it maybe. Well, you've yeah. got the rat dam there, so that's... Yeah, like the rat dam, feet. water surface, but the water surface, the rat dam is actually partially submerged, so the water comes in and has like a six or eight inch drop there, okay, and it's about so another foot from Spring. Okay, so it's not a lot. Okay, 
say, so you wouldn't get a real change in the river. No, no. And, and, down through town. and the bedrock there will really hold the river in place because because there's so many things sitting on the edge of the river, you couldn't. You have to really be careful about that. And one thing I just wanted Bob, to say, you know, concept design. We think of that as like being 30% design. So this is really high level initial thinking about the site. Um, we'll we'll put a, a cost estimate on that, but there will still be a fair bit of work. The idea is just to present this, and now there's you know you're all asking great questions about the changing context in this area because it's in such flux right now. So we're going to try our best to take all that in and, and put forward a couple concepts and see if the city council and the people in the city like it, and, and we're going to go from there. Did you have, Did you have okay. questions? Um, I was a retailer for like 32 years in the art, I co-owned the Artisan's Hand. Okay. Um, so my genetics is as a retailer. Yeah. Um, and most of my buddies are just for people that might have just moved here or whatever, are um, super into the hotel and the parking garage. I mean, want it to be pretty and everything, but just to get that general feeling out there that this is a place of commerce. There should, you know, this is a place of density. This is a downtown. And uh, the thing that's excite exciting to me about this whole, you know, I'm sure things will get tweaked about the parking garage and the hotel and the transit center and everything. And also the housing, behind, the new housing that will be behind the church. All of those represent to me um, community members who are right at the back door of this park. And there's already an established path, and there's been something like a 30-year plan to finally connect the path, and now it's happening. So I feel like it's totally integrated into what's happening there now for that part to become a place that a lot of people will be interested. You know, they're right there. Yeah. And I and as a retailer, I see people coming from that hotel and all of a sudden that part, the 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 main the the Shaw's end of Main Street becomes a more interesting place because they can just cross the river walking and there they are at the Savoy or at the or Sarucci's. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, can you know, whatever, get takeout from Bajitos and go to the park. <laughs> yeah. So it just seems very integrated in a good way. It's not like plunking, the park isn't any, it feels like it's all of this future planning is ready for that park. Kind of. Sounds I great. Well, I just wanted um, to. I was rather alarmed last summer how low the water was in the river, in both parts of the river. So I don't know if you can do anything about that, but I mean, it looked like a beach, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you look at Sardinians, <laughs> which is the only place we really have to look at the river, and it was dry. Mm -hmm. The little trickle going. Yeah, it was a very low flow at the um, at the end of the summer and fall last year. Yeah. Um, we saw some record flows, low flows in the area. Um, some of that sedimentation is from those dams. And that's part of this is allowing the river to sort of re naturally move water and sediment and ice out of the system and downriver. So, that might be so that's kind of what we're looking at the dams and considering maybe taking those out. Because a lot of that sediment, you see it uh, when the water goes down, you look upstream from all the bridges and you see these sediment bars. And that's actually sand and grit coming off the roads and getting stuck in the rivers here. So. Um, that is an important consideration, um, and we're going to look at you know high all the different flows and the range of flows because if you're designing an element where you go to the water, you have to kind of know the water changes, right? It can be high like today or low like you're talking about, and you don't want features not in the right spot as you approach the river. So we'll think about that. Yeah. Um, I think all of your ideas about what this could be are fabulous, and I, I'm just really sorry it's such a small amount of land because obviously you can't do all those things that you're suggesting and I wonder if well I was going to ask you two questions one is do you ha in other communities where you work do you have any pictures of what could happen in, a, in, in something like this the same size and if not I just wondered if the best use of our thinking here 
is do you want us to just set some priorities for out of all the wonderful things you mentioned this place could be? What are the one or two things we want it to be? Is that how you want I us mean, to put these you, cards? I think it would be great if you, if you listed maybe you know in in the order that you're, of your preference. So there are, there is going to be some give and take for a, a few different things, and if you just listed them in your top preference, and you can list as many things as you want. Um, and then we can kind of weigh them in that order. That would be really helpful. Um, there are examples of different sizes that have really become <coughs> the assets. Um, probably the biggest, most popular examples in the city of Denver. There's this giant um, park there that has become like a hub of activity. Um, it's a little more um, concrete and urban because it's in a metropolitan city. Um, you can look that up um, at their park. Um, but there's a lot of small towns, and then there's communities around um, Vermont, New Hampshire, that have done, you know, in colleges that have created small river accesses to sort of accomplish a lot of the goals that, that we're talking about. I mentioned the, the one in New Haven, and there's a couple spots on the Connecticut River as well. When you were doing research, did you look at what was what was that called, the Net Zero Project here? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we yeah, definitely there was some really yeah really good things. stuff, yeah. great ideas, yeah. and some of those have kind of gone into our thinking. I mean, to be honest with you, we've probably looked at twenty to fifty various sketches, including the Net Zero, that have, we probably gathered from folks over ten or twenty years. Yeah, so there's a, there's tons of information. The idea is sort of like culling it down and. Um, doing what's what's possible on this on this site. I think, um, and going back to maybe your comment in the back about integrating this, like, and your comment about you never going here, I think this spot is so critical because um, actually you'd have to work to avoid it, I think, if you hang out in Montpelier enough, because yeah. if you're riding a bike, um, if you're shopping, if you're going to the grocery store, um, if you're eating lunch on a nice day at the church, if you're walking across our new bridge, like you're, everything, a lot of things in town will actually take you right through these two sites. Um, if you're buying art supplies, I mean, you can kind of get it all right here. Um, and I think um, you'll see more people coming to these spots. I mean, when we build that, that um, it's the Eagle Scout Park in Bristol, like we didn't see a lot of people out there. And as we were finishing, just a path to get people to the river, like we had to close it because people wouldn't get off the thing so we could finish building it. Um, and I think you'll see something like that here, especially with a huge density of people living here and housing and ice cream shops. And you know, it's really a really neat opportunity um, to connect. You know, I, I do agree, like economic development in the city is the driver, but I think people come to a city like Montpelier because you know, you're also looking at an amazing park back here. And you know, people are building mountain bike trails off to the side, and then they come in and eat dinner and get ice cream, and then they come to the river and sit here. Like it's sort of a package, and I think um, it all it all sort of works together, like you were alluding to in your comments. So I think it's just a really, really amazing opportunity. I just get nervous about the empty storefronts. That Say again. I see now the empty storefronts. Yeah, that I, is I think people problem. have to realize mm -hmm. that the retail is that the retail culture is fragile, mm -hmm. and yeah. and. You need to kind of, you know, understand that the retailers aren't ju just don't take them for granted. Yeah, but I think because like, of, they need they need more they need people to shop. And it's true. Need, and 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 they need the periphery around Montpelier to come. I mean, just because you're in Montpelier <coughs> and you buy local, that's not going to do it mm -hmm. for Bear Pond. Yeah. You know, they need Woodbury and. Yeah. You know, Middlesex, and you know they need people that yeah. are driving in. Well, a lot of people that I've flown with for the past decade, we go to other towns for a safe place to bike with a kid and have a meal, or and then you end up shopping a little bit. So right. I, I think this could help bring people here. You know, like if you yeah, look at no, towns this like isn't, Stowe this isn't, and Bennington, it's not so much the park. Yeah. It's it's I know that there's people that have been angry about the garage and cars. You know, so that's that's my thing. The park is okay. there's it has no conflict at all with that. Um, and I think there's a real opportunity there, though, to connect the two things: the park and the economic vitality, and right. and um, really and enhance the bike path. And it's bringing people to to the city when it's such a visible draw. And um, as as Steve and Roy both mentioned, I mean, there are examples across the country and. 
um, Missoula, Montana is where I went to grad school, and that is a prime example of a river-centric area where people, um, it, the equivalent of Montpelier Live, the businesses there got together and said, how can we use this riverfront to best benefit us? And they worked together with some conservation organizations, and now it's, it's every single day there's something down by the river that is, whether it's um, carts for the restaurants have food carts one day. Um, there's a market at other days, and so it's something that it's a, a real draw for people to go to the local stores right. and to really enhance to to get that vibrancy back for the storefront. So, I think are there other spots along the river that could be like when you say being to put in and you know go somewhere and you know have you know, be along the river, are there other places like the wreck, the the wreck field? Are there places along the North Branch that sure. are, could get more little small places, yeah. or down? They tried down by the um, where the interstate crosses. Um, yeah. I guess it's the Winus. Yeah, you um, can you can go in and out of the river there. Sure, like you could go for a quick paddle or do some fishing between those two spots. I've done that before and. I mean, the River Conservancy and other groups have, you know, designated access areas along the river. So if you look, you can find them. And I would say, you know, we did a project up in East Burke last year that sort of changed the nature of the river. And, you know, for the first time this year, they had a paddler's event right through the center of East Burke Village, you know, and it brought tons of people to that town in addition to mountain biking. So, you know, I, again, I think there are lots of opportunities that if this, you know, if and when this thing goes, you know, there'll be a lot of, you can make a paddler's trail through here, and, you know, I, I think people will kind of, and then the water quality gets improved, and swimming, and, you know, I think it could really take off. So, so the one you know, is, you might mention that there's a, a group of crazies who are having a white bird contest just below the bridge by Shaw's. If that could be opened up, that they see having a, uh, a whitewater paddling capacity right there with rolling and practice classes, uh, they're that already draw a lot of people. They're already dreaming about it. Mm -hmm. No names will be mentioned. <laughs> That's a good one. I just want to give the example of um, the Earth Clock in Burlington. Some of you might have been there. It's the Stone Circle right on Lake Champlain on the bike yes. path. Yep. Huge attraction. I'm part of the, of the group of people who put that on. It's a nonprofit called Circles for Peace. They're all dedicated to world peace. And part of their mission is getting these um, these gathering places into local um, public parks. And um, Governor Burlington has been so happy about this. There's just tons of events happening there all the time. It's a huge draw. It's a natural gathering space. It's working with local granite from Barry. Um, lots of ceremonies, lots of different spontaneous and planned events happen there all the time. And it's actually had a really positive impact on the larger landscape. And so um, circles for peace. They're awesome. Good people. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to say to the group that I don't think money should be a stopping point right now that imagining is what we're doing. And once we see what's possible, there's plenty of money out there. It's a matter of finding it. Um, you know, clearly we've got to pay for things, but it's not like it's going to come out of everybody's pocket. And the returns are going to be immense. The other thing is just, just to, we didn't talk about the fact that the bike path is about to be extended to the east all the way to Gallison Hill, mm -hmm. which when you put that on this map, it's a mind blow. Mm -hmm. That's why I was, I was wondering is, are there more going to be more opportunities yeah. to add to it further east? Yeah. So that's a, there's certainly mm -hmm. something that we're, and, and you know, other groups are looking at this larger context of Montpelier and beyond, and how do you think about the, the river as being one of the natural connectors of all these places. And, and we know that upstream, you know, the new Caledonia spirits, um, they want to have a river access there. There's other opportunities. So I think this spot can really be kind of the focal point from which you go to and from which you leave from. You know, so it's, I'm really, uh, I kind of get chills. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, yes, a, and there's a question. You were talking about water sports 
through Montpelier, is the river really deep enough for <coughs> it is? Sure. Because I've walked there, uh, past the river countless times, and it looks like I can see to the bottom with the rocks and whatnot. Yeah. Summer. You've already studied that. Um, yeah, I mean, and also just fished and paddled in the in that in the stretch of river there. I mean, the water, some the water is going you know up and down depending on the flows and the time of year, but not so much. Less. And for swimming also, yeah, it's you pretty low. Swimming. Yeah, the, the swimming will be a future item, especially through the city. There's some water quality issues, um, but that will hopefully come. Well, I was just thinking about the depth of the water, if it's deep enough for swimming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are some holes um, yeah. that you could swim in. I, I just wanted to, to it's almost it's 10, 10 more minutes or so. Um, I want to just ask folks, not to end the conversation in the demo, but are there any concerns about the use of this place, you know, nighttime use, um, you know, just we want to address those in the design process and not have those kind of come at us after we've figured this out. So I, I'm not quite sure if there are any, but we've, we've heard, for instance, some people asking, what's the lighting going to be? Can you, tonight, could you go down there and feel okay? Um, so I just, does anybody have any concerns or things that we should be thinking about? One of my concerns is how you maintain uh, the infrastructure, especially down by the river, with high water and flooding. You know, what are the long-term maintenance costs? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have a concern about uh, getting into the river in a boat. I mean, that area, the water can come up pretty quick, and people do it now. Uh, high school students do it, but uh, I'm just concerned. People who don't understand, you know, how much the river comes up and how powerful the water is there. I mean, because there's, you know, you can get in real trouble, you know, pretty quick there if you, if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I would say lighting to me would solve. Uh, I mean, I think sometimes there is historic issues with people kind of hiding around back of Shaw's and around the railroad bridge, mm -hmm. um, and that probably lighting would solve some of that, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. so. you, uh, well, under that bridge right now, there's a fair amount of um, illegal substance use. Mm -hmm. that presumably will be lessened at, by design by the way it's accessed. But that certainly has been a reality in the past. Yeah, big challenge. It's kind of changing use patterns and, yeah. Yeah, and all those homeless folks, like, where do they go? You know, they yeah. don't have a lot of options already, and yeah. that's a bigger question. It's like, you know, if they're going to be moved <coughs> out of that place because it's cleaned up, then where do they go? Right. Are there people living down there? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I met some of them. Some of them really care about that river, too. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, yep, so th those are our main questions that I believe we've, we've touched on. Um, but if there's something that you want to share with us that hasn't been shared, if you could jot it down on, on a card and give it to us and um, or email us. Or email us. Uh, the information is here. Sign up for an email list. Grab one of my cards. Um, get in touch with us, and especially before January 9th. Um, so, again, January 9th is when we'll be we're on the city council agenda to present the conceptual design and feasibility study. And um, we would love to have you all there as support, as interested to, to share your, your ideas, to share your support. Um, and again, any questions in the meantime, thoughts, ideas, please let us know. And well, that's say don't wait until the city council. Don't wait until then, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that it's important to keep talking it up and, it, yes. and to you know, get a hold of your city council people and let them know. But you already have some design on, I mean, January 9th is not that far away, so you have actually have quite a lot thought through already, right? And we've, we've, had, we've had some 
an iteration, yes. And it's been, as I, as you know, I mentioned, it's a compressed timeline. We're working, mm -hmm. you know, Malone and McBroom have done an amazing job. They're working really, really quickly um, to, to take it all in and spin it around and um, give us some options. So yes, we're, we're in that process now. So the, the design that, that came out with the AARP mailing, is that what you're sort of working from now? I mean, there was a pretty detailed design. Oh, I don't know what went out with the AARP mailing. <laughs> I, mean, it, it, I mean, it showed different uh, access to the river in a couple places, trees, band shell. Oh, you know that. what? I wonder. I actually, I didn't see that email. I think Could I saw that. I mean, we've... Um, is that from net zero, maybe? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was related to the parking garage mailing. No, I, no, no, this was last week inviting me to this meeting. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, I oh. don't, I would love to see that. I don't know, but um, it wasn't. I don't know if anybody's seen that. Yeah, yeah it, wasn't, um, it wasn't what we've been working on this time. As we mentioned, you know, these conversations have been happening for 25 years, and I know that in 2014, um, uh, Greg Gossens of the Gossens Bachman Architects had a whole had a whole public process with four public meetings where they came up with different iterations for not the transit center, but also the Confluence Park. So it could have, I wonder if they were renderings from, from that, um, that time around, but. I remember the boardwalk. <laughs> there was a boardwalk idea that would take you down to the bridge at Langdon Street. Okay. On the side, but that was, seemed kind of cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's been lots of great ideas, and um, it's, it's our hope that we're, building on those and um, presenting something that will uh, move forward, continue to move forward. So many thanks everyone for coming tonight. We really appreciate you being here and sharing your questions and ideas. <coughs>